YouTube Zookeeper. So the question today is what can I make out of a piece of solid copper wire with uh, insulated copper wire, a board, some drill bits, some crock clamps, and some shrink tube. And with any luck at all, the answer to that question is an electronics holder. Sometimes you need to hold um, a piece of wire or a resistor or something because you have to tin it and uh, You have to tin it, you have to um, solder some sockets. Now for this, soldering sockets works really well. You just put this in here and you uh, can solder the tips there, um, on there. But if you have to try to solder this together, how do you, you only have two hands, how can you do that? So I'm going to use these to make a holder. And I'm going to try some video editing today. I don't know if I'm going to be successful, but I'm going to make one video and then I'm going to try to piece it together like some of the real people who know what the heck they're doing. Are able to do. We'll see if that works. I'll show you how I'm going to divide this. So if I take this board and that is the board length and that is half the board length. It's approximately there. If I flip it around, it's approximately there, and I'll divide the two in half. So that's half length. If that's half, like that, if I divide that in half, I should be right there. Yep. I'll do that on this side as well. And folks, I'm just showing people, <laughs> you know, a really crude way to figure out, if you don't have a tape measure handy, approximately, I mean, this is not scientific. This is just a hobby project. This is not intended to be sold on the internet or anything. And then um, approximately somewhere in the middle, you know, probably don't want to drill in the middle of the uh, knot there. Um, same with this guy. So maybe this one's over here. And this one can be, you know, pretty close to the middle. Would be right there. Okay. So now I'll drill my hole. And make sure that what I think will fit will actually fit. And I want to be sure that I don't drill too deeply. So in order to do that, I will measure the depth that I don't want to exceed. I'll put a piece of tape. I'll move it out like that. I'll put a piece of tape around this right there. That way. If I don't touch the tape, I shouldn't be too deep and drill into my nice table. Am I on? Nope, I'm on. Gotta shift to high speed here. Again, I didn't want to get deep enough to touch the tape. I just wanted to come up to it. 
these guys off the side here. And lo and behold, I didn't put any marks in my table. So that's good. My wire though. Set my wire down someplace. There it is. Okay. So that was 760 force. Does this work? Nope, it's got to be bigger. Okay. That's unfortunate, but not shocking because I didn't measure. Again, you know, I'm just doing this mix size biggers over here. Why do I have two 764s? Interesting. Never noticed that before. Okay, so I know I know how long I want that, so I need one more piece of tape. Doesn't need to be very big. I'm using a really small piece. And I'll just line these up like this. And then Carefully put this piece of tape where the other one was. And make sure that that will not contact. And that's good. So we're done with that. We can put this one back. Put the other drill bit in. And again, you know, sure, it'd be way easier if you measure first, but maybe you don't have one a tape measure handy that's accurate enough. I mean, with this stuff, it only takes to be off just a teeny bit and it won't work. And now I can always put way more holes in this if I desire, desire to in the future. Okay. Let's see, does eighth inch work better? Oh yeah. Okay, eighth inch works great. Okay, perfect. All right, so one eighth inch wound up to be the sweet spot. That's good. Take my tape off, put my drill bit back. And that's done. Done and dusted, as they say. Okay. So now. I want to decide, I want to decide how long I want to make these. So I'm going to take this, I'm just going to cut this into pieces that are about that long. I don't know. Is that too long, too short? I have no idea. So I got four pieces here, one much longer and three shorter and I can put these in here like this and they'll hold my parts okay so um, how do I how do I attach these? Well, I'm going to crimp them. I specifically bought these because they could be crimped or soldered. They've got a hole in the bottom. Um, you can actually put the wire right through here. Um, there's a dimple so the wire can slide through. You could insulate it, but again, I don't want this is not to be conductive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this crimper because it's got this dimple right here and this dimple goes not where the seam is on this side that's not right but it goes on this side so all I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up like this and I'm left-handed so I'm going to put the this piece in here like that until it comes through and you see I'm just going to crimp it Again, this doesn't need to be super tight. And there's the finished crimp. And then I 
can put this guy in here. I can bend it any way I want. I can bend it backwards like that. I can rotate it to the side. It'll do anything I want. Okay. I think I'll do two of these this way. I'm just put, putting this in until the white comes all the way through. Just give it a squeeze. Again, it doesn't have to be tight. Just so you have a good impression on there. And then I've got this guy right here. And this one's different. I'm going to have to solder this one or something. I considered just drilling a hole and having this out to the side, but I don't think that will work very well. So I am going to solder this one. And for that, I'll need to strip this wire. And I'll actually use this because I can go like this and I can rotate this. And then I'll just be able to solder it on like that, I think. Um, I'll probably strip it back. I'll use this longer piece. Um, and, all right. Oh, I forgot. Um, help. <laughs> this one is a... Uh, I got all this stuff from DigiKey. A BU118. That's that guy. And this guy and this guy are BU-60s. I'm going to grab another BU-60 out of my bag. I was only going to do three, but I decided to do four. Going to put which one do I want this long? I think I'll do this one because it's shorter. And one of these is not going to be insulated. Again, just crimping it. Okay. So this one is done. These other two, I'm going to insulate, but let me get my wire stripper. hiding at the bottom of my tool pile over here because I haven't used it in quite a while. Now, if I was stripping wire um, to connect something, I would not be doing it this way. This has an adjustment on it. I would absolutely want to make sure that I did it correctly because this will close down too much and chop that wire off. But I'm going to be very careful. I'm going to come back about an inch and I'm just gently going to roll this and then pull the insulation off. If I have a little nick there, that's okay. And, yeah, I can do it with this. I'm going to put this in here and give it a bend because what I want to do like I said before, is I want to solder this. Yes, that'll work just fine. I need pliers. Wind up with darn near every tool I've got out here. By the time I'm done, I'm afraid. All right, this would work better to begin with. There, see I bent that over. I'll try to stick it in there like that. Kind of force it over. Then I'll clamp it down. really not the correct tool for this. There. It's better. 
You can see it's a little wonky here. Let's straighten that out like that. And I'm only doing this so that it's a little bit stronger. All right, then I will, this is where I'll solder. Now oh, we can just put that in there like that. Nope, that won't work. I have to go this way. Okay, let's fire up the soldering iron. And I'm only soldering it so it stays tight. I'm not going to solder it because it needs to be an electrical connection. I'm letting Hako warm up a little. 750 degrees is what I have it set for. It's my most frequent soldering temperature. Others work fine, but that's the one I use the most. It's approaching 750 now. Okay, we're there. All right, so I pull. So from behind here, without knocking everything over. Uh, need some water to desolder with. Get that magnetic thing to hit out of here. We don't want magnets anywhere near this project. Now I just put a little water in my sponge. Keep a bottle of distilled water around. Just for that purpose. And see if we can do some solder. This is going to take quite a bit of heat, so um, I'm doing it at the end so that it grips better. And this is a stainless steel. Um, a gripper. So that could potentially cause some problems because it can be very difficult to solder stainless steel. Yeah. If, if not almost impossible. Yeah, this is um, this is being a real bear. I had neglected to recall the uh, fun I've had soldering stainless steel in the past, and uh, it's uh, to say not a lot of fun is a gross understatement. This stuff, I don't know what it is. I probably don't have the right solder. The right technique. I don't know, but it just doesn't ever seem to want to stick. Even after everything cools off, it just. Well, it's maybe.
We'll see. I know it's possible. It worked. So we're not going to touch that right now, but we do have, um, where'd it go? I've got my heat shrink, and then we're going to see if I can shrink the heat shrink. So the question becomes, how did I set this up for length? I'll pull this out, set that back there. So really all I did in my, is to just jam that guy in there. You know, kind of see where the end is, right? And just go a little bit beyond the end and just clip it off. And then, same thing on the other side. And then, see about where the end is and just clip it off. That's all we're trying to do is just cover the end. If it's too long or too short, you know, we can trim it again. Yes, the scissors would have been better choice. Okay. So, uh, there we go. And we'll see if the soldering iron is warm enough. What do you folks think? Think it's warm enough? I'm not going to touch the tip. I know a lot of um, YouTube videos out there, people using the tips to uh, punch holes in plastic. Um, and I'm not doing that for the following reason. These are for soldering electronics. Um, if, I wanna, if I had a separate one, and I wanted to use a different one for... Um, putting holes, but I don't want to contaminate that tip. It's, I don't think that'll be helpful for what I'm trying to do here with my do-it-yourself projects. I could be wrong. Might be totally okay. Might work really well. But I don't think it's something I want to get involved with. Okay, that worked all right. I can still open this. I am going to get a screw, uh, screwdriver, a uh, scissors. Should have done that first, I suppose. Now, I've got grippers that I can safely put things in and they won't chew up the end. I like that. Okay, that's cool enough. I can touch those two now. Alright. So I've got this other one to do. as well. And this time I'm just going to heat them up. I'm going to cut them later. And I've got this one to do. So we'll cut this one because I didn't cut it in half earlier. Um, I don't really know how this is going to work. It barely fits over this already. So I may not go any further with that one. Oh, 
Okay, that's done. So let's see here. Let that cool. Really should have got a heat gun for this. Um, I'm not liking the amount of sticky that's going on to my uh, soldering iron very well. I mean, it's not going to hurt anything because I'm not using the tip. But, yeah, this is one of those cases where I think my zeal for continuing my project and not getting the right tool for the job is probably going to wind up costing me extra work in the long run but you know what I'm gonna quote my friend Mitch if you're not failing once in a while you're not trying hard you can't fail if you just keep doing what you know works if you never try anything new and you only do what you know will work, you'll, you should never fail. And I'm not a fan of failure or mistakes, but you know what? By the same token, I'm not a, I'm not a believer in never trying anything new either. Okay, so now I just want to kind of, for my own purposes, figure out where the ends are. Chop them off like that. There we go. Opens up nicely. There's my second one. And my third one over here. Nip the end of that off. So I drilled three holes. I divided this in half and then I divided each half in half is how I did that. Okay, so if this is three inches, this is one and a half, um, and that got me four, one, two, three, four equal um, spots. So this is, oops, um, three inches, six is here, this is one and one half and this is one and one half okay so I have one and a half one and a half three to the middle one and a half and one and a half these holes are one eighth inch these pieces of wire are approximately five inches long, except for this super long one, which was closer to eight inches long because I had to bend it over on the end because this doesn't have any crimping. I'm using insulated wire for two reasons. One is it's got a little bit more grip on the outside so that when you put it in, it doesn't spin as easily. And secondarily, I don't want this to be conductive to this. I know wood's not conductive, but I, want, I don't need it or want it to be conductive. 